What's up guys? I'm Code Gray. Welcome back to the channel. All right, today we're going to talk about three things that have surprised me since I bought my CBR 1000RR. Now these three things are the complete opposite of what I expected when I bought this bike. Okay, the very first uh, thing that surprised me about this bike was the, the sense of speed. I'm not talking about how fast I'm going. I'm talking about the sense of speed. I got a real good example I think most of us can relate to. Okay, let's say you're driving in a smallish car, doing about 55 miles per hour down the road. Everything seems normal. Then you get in a great big truck that's a whole lot bigger, a whole lot heavier, and uh, you're driving 55 miles per hour down the road, but man, being in that big giant truck feels like you're doing about 30. That's what I mean by sense of speed. And vice versa, let's say you're in the great big truck doing 55 miles per hour and everything feels normal. Then you go and get in a small car doing 55 and it feels like you're flying. Okay, so why is the sense of speed on this bike surprising to me? Well, my last bike, my CBR 650F, it weighed about 460 pounds. This bike weighs about 420 pounds. On my 650, if you were doing 65, 70 miles per hour, you felt every bit of it. 70 felt like 70, 55 felt like 55. So I expected when I got on this bike, since it was going to be a lighter bike, that it would feel even faster. Just like when you get out of a truck and get into a car, it feels like you're flying. I figured it'd be the same sensation. But actually, it's the complete opposite, which is pretty surprising. You could be doing 75, 80 miles per hour down the road and feel like you're doing about 50 or 55. It's very easy to accidentally speed on this bike. No, I'm not sure if it's because of the suspension, the frame, uh, the way uh, my seating position, I, I don't know. As I've said before, I'm not a mechanic and I really haven't looked into that too much, but uh, yeah, I was pretty surprised. I mean, for instance, right now I'm doing about 50, 52. I feel like I'm doing about 30. Now, the second thing that surprised me about this bike, and I have talked about it before in a previous video, but uh, I'll go in a little bit deeper. The, the second thing that surprised me about this bike is the comfort. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I've talked about the seating position being good for my back and I found that comfortable, but uh, that's not the comfort I'm talking about. Let me give you a little bit of a backstory about what surprises me about the bike, comfort-wise. Now, I'm not going to go into any gory details, but back in 2005, 2006, somewhere around there, I was involved in a very bad industrial accident. Life flighted and everything. Now due to that accident, uh, it left my hands with what the doctors call permanent partial disability. Now don't get me wrong, I have 100% control of my hands, or 100% use. But the problem is, is that my hands cramp very, very easily. 
Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, if your hands cramp so easily, you would want less pressure on them. So you would be better off on a cruiser, right? With your hands right out in front of you. Well, my very first bike was a upright naked bike. So my hands were directly out in front of me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what bike I'm on. Uh, it doesn't matter if I'm using tools, playing guitar, because I play guitar. Uh, it doesn't matter what I'm doing with my hands, they cramp very easily. There's just no getting around it. Now, depending on what I'm doing, they may cramp quicker than normal. But no matter what, they're going to cramp. So here comes the surprising part. Okay, the surprising part is, of all the bikes that I've owned, it takes the longest on this bike for my hands to start cramping. Why? I have no idea. I don't know. I thought it would be the complete opposite. Because yes, they, you do have more pressure on your wrists and hands in this position. Not always. I mean, you're going to use your core and use your legs to take the weight off of your hands and your wrists. But uh, yes, technically you will have a little bit more pressure on your hands and wrists in this seating position. So when I bought the bike, I figured my hands would cramp quicker than on my other bikes. But they're going to cramp anyway, so why not get the bike, right? Yeah, it's really weird because... On my 650, 15 to 20 minutes on the bike and my hands were cramping and I'd have to, you know, swap out and put my hands in different positions and set up right and with one hand back and then relax the other one and flop it around a little bit and all that. But nope, not on this one. For some reason, I have gone over an hour of riding without having to take my hands off the handlebars. The clip-ons, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know why. I 100% expected the opposite. So, win-win. The bike's more comfortable for my back and more comfortable for my hands. I don't get it, but I ain't complaining. All right, the third surprising thing that... Uh, We'll talk about for a leader bike is torque now before I bought this bike you know I did like everybody else does watch the half a dozen probably 50 or more YouTube videos about this bike and leader bikes in general and just you know you gather information from uh, a lot of the people you subscribe to anyway Now, one of the most common things that you will hear from people who ride leader bikes, not all of them, but it, it, I've heard it, it was fairly common saying. Now, this saying has come from people who have been riding leader bikes and, you know, high-powered motorcycles for a long time, okay? So understand this first. But the, the thing they say the most is, yeah, leader bikes, you know, until you hit that power band, they're gutless. Well, I, Code Gray, am here to tell you that is 100% crap. If you get on a leader bike and expect it to be gutless off the line, you are gonna wreck. And you're gonna wreck in a real hurry. You're going to go right into a tree or right to a ditch because you're going to get on there thinking you're not going to have power on tap and you are going to have a whole lot of power on tap. So if someone tells you that leader bikes are gutless until you hit, until you hit the power band, don't believe it. Don't believe it for a second. Now, 
Saying that, if you have been riding a leader bike for a long time and you're used to that power, that kind of power is something you can get used to. Okay, so over time, yes, for a very experienced person on a leader bike, it may feel a little gutless until you hit the power band because you've just gotten used to it, that's all. But for a new rider on a leader bike of any kind, don't believe the height, man. There is a lot of power on tap right from the get-go. But I'm gonna wrap this up, guys. It's As you can see, it is very nice outside. A little chilly, 53, 54 degrees. But still, a very nice day for a ride, and I am going to enjoy it. Alright guys, I'm Code Gray. I'll catch you guys in the next one.